crackdown. Questa mattina la Polizia di Stato, nell'ambito di un'attività coordinata dalla Direzione Distrettuale Antimafia di Bologna, ha eseguito una vasta operazione antidroga nei confronti di un sodalizio albanese che importava notevoli quantitativi di cocaina dalla Germania sino in Italia. The operation also resulted in the seizure of over 40 kg of cocaine. Abbiamo monitorato numerosi viaggi dalla Germania sino in Italia dei corrieri albanesi. In un'occasione un corriere albanese è stato bloccato in Piemonte con oltre 22 kg e mezzo di cocaina. Authorities revealed that the criminal network, based between the provinces of Bologna and Modena, maintained strong ties with associates in Albania and Germany and was suspected of having connections in South America, particularly Ecuador. According to police reports, the group operated discreetly, relying on an Albanian broker and his two brothers to supply substantial amounts of cocaine to a network of global buyers. The imports from Germany were facilitated through vehicles fitted with hidden compartments, avoiding direct import channels. The successful operation underscores the ongoing efforts by law enforcement agencies to combat transnational drug trafficking and organized crime. Investigations into the extent of this network's activities are ongoing. Agency Report, Republic TV. And with that, we are heading to a very short break. On the other side, uh, we'll get you the latest uh, from on all that's making me news uh, from the world of entertainment. Malayalam blockbuster Manjumal Boys is back in spotlight. And Dev Patel's action thriller movie breaks uh, even rakes in 10.1 million dollars in just three days' time. उत्तर प्रदेश में दो लड़कों की जो फिल्म पिछली बार ड्रॉप हो चुकी है उस दो लड़कों की फिल्म को इन लोगों ने फिर से रिलीज किया है मुझे समझ नहीं आता अरे काट की हांडी को ये इंडी गठबंधन वाले कितनी बार चढ़ाएंगे Uh, they produce uh, content uh, relating to the activities of the monkeys and they have fed the monkeys with food in which whereas the monkey should be left alone whereas the monkey should be living in the in the wild where they supposed to be uh, live <laughs> This is the problem for us. Uh, we need to uh, find solid uh, uh, reasons in which we can use against them and to prevent them not to make uh, content on by abusing the, uh, the monkey. I 
rừng núi nhưng mà đẹp ăn ba phơi thì bây nhưng thọ tạ tam phơi tam đục nhưng mà đẹp ăn ba phơi là rừng đừng đưa rừng hàng từ ba bây nhưng để rồi thọ là tui tui tam phơi tam như thế và rừng ba phơi là cái phơi ba mà đừng thì và ban sau chùa ruộng ấy và thầm thầm đá việc sau ba phơi khâu to nhiều cái những thứ chui đó cắn vật cắn đây đánh vây vía đó chui phiêu chui khâu khâm đó ai chụp rụp phiêu bị mui nữa dương nụ thừa bám What they want is your food, but you also need to appreciate that there needs to be a boundary between um, what, like human intervention in nature, and it's obviously a great thing that so many tourists come because it's such a lovely place. Um, but at the same time, have to be careful that with more and more people coming. Um, and just with lots of people coming generally, um, that the monkeys then... Now, in a compelling saga of vengeance, Sir Dev Patel's electrifying thriller Monkey Man made its grand debut on the big screens across North America. Uh, Monkey Man Note uh, is the second highest grossing film at the domestic box office last weekend, marking over $10 million across more than 3,000 theatres. Uh, this gripping tale, once signed by Netflix, uh, found a new lease on life under the banner of Universal Pictures, who swooped in with $10 million acquisition deal. Uh, Monkey Man also unfolds a riveting saga of blood, passion and political intrigue plunging audiences into a heart-pounding odyssey. Have a look at this report. In a cinematic whirlwind that swept across North American theatres, Dave Patel's Monkey Man made a roaring entrance. I was a boy. With a jaw-dropping $10.1 million at the box office, Dave Patel made his first debut in Hollywood. To the land. Monkey Man was inspired by Hindu deity Hanuman, portraying his strength, loyalty and courage. The film centers on the character named Kid, played by Patel, who makes a living working in an underground fight club who later seeks to avenge his mother's horrific death by infiltrating the elite class of a Mumbai-like city. This is not the place to work if you can't handle that. After the film was dropped by its original studio, Netflix, Universal Pictures acquired the film for $10 million after Monkey Man failed to figure in Netflix's annual release calendar. I've got an answer to every prayer. Netflix, who paid a reputed $30 million for the film, decided not to release it because, as per reports, it was too grim for the Indian market, which they hoped to win. Monkey Man has yet to receive approval for release in India, where Universal retains rights. Agency Report, Republic TV. And with that, uh, here's, uh, we are slipping into a short break. Coming up on the Morning Express, uh, we'll get you the latest uh, election updates from across the country. It's uh, day two of Prime Minister's Tamil Nadu campaign. Also tracking uh, on the other side, the Aam Aadmi Party uh, all set to move top court after Delhi High Court rejected Kejriwal's plea. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 11th year by India Today. A testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. Modi says that the money is straight. लाभार्थी के बैंक खाते में जाए लेकिन टीएमसी कह रही है कि केंद्र का पैसा पहले उनके खाते में आए अब आप मुझे बताइए जनता के हक का पैसा मैं टीएमसी को कैसे लूटने दूं?
back ladies and gentlemen welcome back and now it's time after that really hot debate for the nation's sharpest opinion you as if i can request our production team to play full frame the pictures of the prime minister campaigning in tamil nadu i just want to begin by saying we was please understand what the real big story of the general elections of 2024 are if you haven't noticed it yet let me tell you number one headline is going to be the bjp entry into the southern parts of india especially into tamil nadu the bjp led by prime minister narendra modi's personal political aggression the passion and deep synergy and strategy that the bjp is working with into making inroads into tamil nadu ladies and gentlemen please watch the pictures and understand and mark my words tonight 10 or 2 pm today i am saying the biggest headline of this election so far is the attempt by the bjp to enter tamil nadu which it will it should not be lost on anyone look at the crowds look at the responses the prime minister himself has been to tamil nadu more than one dozen times in the last 6 months but it would be folly on the part of anyone to dilute the significance of the bjp trying to make inroads to become the third force maybe the second force in tamil nadu politics everywhere the dmk is responding to the bjp even more to the dmk the dmk congress combine is threatened in an environment of only and only dravidian politics that has been spanning over 6 decades hindu vote polarization is a reality and the bjp is squarely saying that the anti Hello and welcome viewers you're watching the Morning Express with me Gini Narula let's take a look at our top headlines of this hour Prime Minister Tamil Nadu campaign continues set to hold mega rallies for a second straight day Bhagwan Mahan to meet Kejriwal today in Tihar jail Sanjay Singh likely to accompany After high court said back up now knock supreme court door says hopeful for relief Congress hits back with clear chit to China attack after Shah's Nehru said bye bye jai After Ramdev issued unconditional apology supreme court to hear misleading ads case today Canadian espionage agency claims China interfered with last two elections won by Trudeau. And viewers with less than 10 days to go for the Lok Sabha battle to begin Prime Minister Modi is back in Tamil Nadu. From Rameshwaram to Tiruchirappalli, the Prime Minister's campaign in the South has been unstoppable. His South mission continues today as he moves on to address public meetings in Vellore and Metupalaya. Here's a report. Take a listen. With less than 10 days to go for Phase 1 of the Lok Sabha 2024 polls, Prime Minister Modi's Tamil outreach continues ahead. Over the last few months, the Prime Minister has visited Tamil Nadu and the South over a dozen times. From his temple visits in Rameshwaram, Dhanush Kodi, to Vikas drives in Tiruchipalli and Kalapakkam, Tamil Nadu has been modified. And today marks day 2 of the Prime Minister's South sojourn. Prime Minister Modi is set to attend a public meeting at Vellore and Mittupalayam in Tamil Nadu. 
The NDA and its mega push for Vixit Tamil Nadu has laid the foundation stone of several projects. The PM has described that at the root of this connectivity with the state lies a larger vision of development in the southern region which would lead India on the path of Atmanirbharta. Remember, all seats in Tamil Nadu go to polls in phase 1. The Prime Minister's unstoppable poll blitz marks his relentless support for the BJP leaders set to contest in the state. With the kind of response the BJP is garnering on ground, the Saffron Party is confident of winds of change in the southern state. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Hey viewers, if there's one state where constant political turmoil has kept journalists on the edge ahead of the Lok Sabha elections, then it is the state of Maharashtra. With constant shaping alliance in the state, this time it's the NDA's Mahayuti that has backed the support of a new ally, Raj Thakare's Maharashtra Navnirman Sena. On the other hand, the Mahavikas Agari has finally sealed its seat sharing pact with less than 10 days left for polling to begin in Maharashtra. Now, will these new alliance partners fighting the Lok Sabha elections be able to achieve their targets? Find out in this report. BJP's toss and turn in Maharashtra continues with less than 10 days left for the phase one polling of the Lok Sabha elections set to begin in Maharashtra. Ending days of speculation after multiple rounds of meetings with BJP's top brass, Maharashtra Navnirman Sena chief Raj Thakre has finally extended his support to the NDA alliance ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Addressing a rally in Mumbai's Shivaji Park, the MNS chief declared his support to the Grand Alliance of the BJP, Shiv Sena and the NCP. Maharashtra Navadirman Sena, Bharatiya Janta Paksha, Shiv Sena and NCP. Parantu, Hatta Narendra Mudin Sati, Din Sharth Patimba Deta Hai, Hebyas Aplya Sabol Sariya Sabol Jair Karto. While making it clear that the MNS's shift towards the Mahayuti is only for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership. However, Raj Thakre's support was received by Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde wholeheartedly. बिल्कुल मैं उनका तय दिल से स्वागत करता हूं कि मोदी जी के नेतृत्व के लिए मोदी जी ने जो देश का विकास किया है देश को आगे बढ़ाया है और इसलिए उन्होंने महायुति को सपोर्ट किया है उनको मैं धन्यवाद देता हूं महाराष्ट्र डेप्यूटी चीफ मिनिस्टर देवेंद्र फडणवीस आल्सो हेल्ड राज ठाकरे बाय कांग्रेचुलेटिंग हिम फॉर हिज सपोर्ट to PM Modi's leadership for a Viksit Bharat. While Mahayuti continues to stitch more allies into its ranks, Mahavikas Agadi also made some progress, finally cementing its alliance in the state. Under the MBA's agreed upon seat matrix, Uddhav Sena will be the largest partner, contesting 21 seats, followed by the Congress contesting on 21 seats and the NCP Sharad Pawar faction contesting 10 seats. However, this did not stop the MVA from taking a jibe at Raj Thakre for supporting the NDA in Maharashtra, with Shiv Sena UBT calling the MNS a leaderless and a voterless party. Raj Thakre ji ki jo party hai Maharashtra Nirmar Sena, us party ke paas na to neta hai, न कार्यकर्ता है न ही मतदाता है फिर भी हर व्यक्ति अपनी पार्टी बनाता है उसको पार्टी को आगे बढ़ाना होता है एक फॉर्मेलिटी पूरी करनी ही पड़ती राज ठाकरे जी भारतीय जनता पार्टी की बी टीम बनकर काम करते हैं ये सबको पता है अब चाहे खुलकर काम करिए और चाहे पीछे से उनके लिए मदद करिए एक तरफ 
भारतीय जनता पार्टी को कोसते हैं दूसरी तरफ उनको बिना शर्त समर्थन देते हैं With Mahayuti's yet to finalize the seat sharing matrix in its alliance the MVA has finally caught up in the state after an initial delay in the release of candidate names in Maharashtra Will Raj Thakre's entry just days ahead of the polls have any discernible impact on Mahayuti's prospects Bureau report Republic TV As the political arena braces itself for the upcoming Lok Sabha battle in 2024, there seems to be no respite in sight for the Aam Aadmi Party and its leader Arvind Kejriwal. Amidst a whirlwind of legal turmoil, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Mann and AAP Rajya Sabha MP Sanjay Singh are set to meet the AAP Supremo at the Har Jail. This rendezvous follows hot on the heels of a significant setback for Kejriwal as the Delhi High Court dismissed his plea challenging his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate in connection with a money laundering case intertwined with an alleged excise scam an order that disappointed the opposition less than 10 days before general elections. Now just this development has stirred the political pot leaving the party teetering on edge. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the story. Take a look. Aap Supremo Arvind Kejriwal to stay behind bars ordered the Delhi High Court. Knocking back the party chief's plea, challenging his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate. In a scathing rebuttal, The court noted that the material submitted by the enforcement directorate suggested that the Aam Aadmi Party leader had conspired to formulate the now scrapped Delhi excise policy. The court also noted that Kejriwal was involved in demanding alleged kickbacks of 100 crores, some of which were used to fund the campaign expenses for the 2022 Goa elections. Amid the upset, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Mann and Aam Aadmi Party Rajya Sabha MP Sanjay Singh are set to meet the Aam Aadmi Party Supremo in Tihar Jail. With just 10 days to go for the 2024 Lok Sabha battle and no respite in sight for Delhi Chief Minister, the party is teetering on the edge. While there was a sigh of relief when Sanjay Singh walked free from Tihar jail after enforcement directorate made a concession that same sense of relief didn't extend to Arvind Kejriwal or even BRS chief's daughter K Kavita Just a day prior Kavita was also denied interim bail with her judicial custody now extended till April 23rd adding to the mounting tensions surrounding the Kejriwal situation Following the court's decision to dismiss AAP Supremo's plea, the BJP tore into the party. आम आदमी पार्टी के नेताओं को ये बात समझनी चाहिए कि आज कोर्ट ने स्पष्ट किया है कि अरविंद केजरीवाल व्यक्तिगत रूप से और पार्टी के नेता के रूप में इस किकबैक को लेने में इस पॉलिसी को बनाने में शामिल हैं घोटाला हुआ है चोरी की गई है क्या आज जो तथ्य सामने आए हैं वो बहुत गंभीर है सवेरे से प्रचार था कि जमानत की याचिका लगाई है कोर्ट ने बहुत स्पष्ट कर दिया कि जमानत की तो याचिका ही नहीं थी वो तो हिरासत पे ही सवाल उठाने की याचिका थी यानी अहंकार इतना बड़ा था और तथ्यों के धरातल पर वह चकनाचूर हो गया अरविंद केजरीवाल जी भ्रष्टाचारी हैं और वो जेल में ही रहेंगे आज मान योग हाईकोर्ट ने अरविंद केजरीवाल जी की याचिका जो कहती थी कि उनको इलीगली अरेस्ट किया गया है उसको उसके ऊपर फैसला सुनाते हुए ये कहा With the Lok Sabha polls knocking on the doors, the Aam Aadmi Party chief facing back-to-back -back setbacks. Is the meeting with Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Mann and Aam Aadmi Party MP Sanjay Singh going to bring a strategic shift in tide for AAP's politics while it gears up to knock the doors of the Supreme Court? Bureau report, Republic TV. Viewers getting you all the news and wrap from across the country now. 
State Congress President Ajay Rai called rumors of him joining the BJP baseless that when the people in BJP have no work, then they speak such things. He further said that the Congress will remove BJP from the state. ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी के जो लोग हैं जब उनको कोई काम नहीं मिलता जब वो घबरा जाते हैं परेशान हो जाते हैं तो यही सब हल्ला उड़ाते हैं समाजवादी पार्टी एमपी डिंपल यादव सेड दैट व्हेन इंडिया अलायंस वाज फॉर्मड द बीजेपी वाज वरीड द मोस्ट शी एडेड दैट इंडिया अलायंस इज फाइटिंग द इलेक्शंस वेरी स्ट्रांगली एंड इज गेटिंग द सपोर्ट ऑफ द पीपल इंडिया गठबंधन जो है बहुत ही मजबूती के साथ पूरे देश में चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं और कट्टरता से लड़ रहे हैं और मुझे खुशी इस बात की है कि लोगों का समर्थन लगातार इंडिया गठबंधन को मिल रहा है मॉर्निंग आरती वाज परफॉर्म्ड ऑन द सेकंड डे ऑफ नवरात्रि एट द छतरपुर टेंपल इन दिल्ली डेविडीज इज स्ट्रांगिंग मंदिर्स और नवरात्रि टू ऑफर देयर प्रेयर्स Delhi police arrested a man for killing his live-in partner due to continued pressure for marriage. The accused is said to be a notorious criminal who is involved in over 10 cases including attempted murder and violations of NDPS act. The body of his live-in partner was found inside a wardrobe with strangulation marks on her body. A fire broke out in the mining headquarters that is mineral building in Lucknow. The fire was so terrible that its flames were visible from a distance. Many fire tenders on the spot to control the fire uh, reached there but uh, however it is not yet known what caused the fire. A fire broke out in the forests of Srinagar city of Pauri district of Uttarakhand. Forest area officer informed that the forest department team and the fire brigade teams are working to douse the fire. A massive road accident took place in Raipur after the bus fell into a 50 feet deep ditch. At least 12 passengers died while many sustained injuries. According to reports more than 40 people were traveling in the bus when the accident happened. In a shocking incident, unidentified miscreants entered the wrestling arena and attacked wrestlers with rods and sticks, visuals of which have been captured in the CCTV cameras. Teams have been formed to get hold of the miscreants that are identified in the act. Now after the entire name change row with China in Arunachal Pradesh defense minister Rajnath Singh has come out lashing against China speaking at a rally in Arunachal Pradesh Rajnath Singh once again reiterated that changing names of cities in Arunachal Pradesh is a tactic of no use he further issued a stern warning by saying that India aspires to have good relations with its neighbors but also possesses the power to respond if someone tries to hurt its integrity. Here's what the defense minister had to say. Ever since the election commission has announced the elections in the state of Arunachal Pradesh, sathiyo char rajyon mein assembly elections jaise maine bataya tha june mein khatam ho rahe hain. Arunachal Pradesh on 2nd of june with the 60 assembly constituencies iske baad arunachal pradesh mein date of gazette notification 20 march ko hoga aur date of poll 29 april ko hogi 20 march ko gazette notification 29 april ko date of poll sorry sorry 19 19 april ko 20 march 19 april china has upped the ante around its claims on the integral state of arunachal pradesh be it geopolitical ambition or an attempt to influence the indian elections indian government has given a resolute reply to china over its folly toiling over claims in arunachal pradesh this time its defense minister rajnath singh who has once again reiterated that by merely changing names china is set to achieve nothing 
अभी चीन ने अपनी वेबसाइट पर अरुणाचल प्रदेश के तीन जगहों के नाम को बदल कर पोस्ट कर दिया है बहनों भाइयों नाम बदल देने से कुछ नहीं होने वाला है अपने पड़ोसी को बतलाना चाहता हूं कल चाइना के भी यदि कुछ प्रांतों के कुछ स्टेट्स के हम नाम बदल दें तो क्या नाम बदल देने से चाइना के वह स्टेट्स हमारे हो जाएंगे The roar of the defence minister comes just a day after external affairs minister Dr S J Shankar in an exclusive conversation with Republic reiterated India's stand on the entire issue with China. I think today if one looks at uh, our relationship with the US or uh, our response to China handling of Pakistan uh, stance on you know, the West Asia uh, yeah. Israel I would argue that lot of these would have been different had uh, a BJP sarkar under Narendra Modi not been in power. This government, for example, has a uh, has a very uh, robust policy on counter terrorism. It has a, a strong policy on defending our borders. With two high-ranking cabinet ministers rebuking China in rapid succession over its policy, the Indian government has made it clear: China must hold its horses. Bureau report Republic TV Republic TV After the Reserve Bank of India censured the Paytm Payments Bank over compliance and supervisory concerns last month Paytm Payments Bank CEO and managing director Surinder Chawla has tendered his resignation following the exit of founder and non-executive chairman Vijay Shekhar Sharma as part of the restructuring bid of the outfit While Paytm will continue its operation after receiving a third party app license it has ceased its operation as a bank as part of a broader board overhaul in compliance with RBI's regulation here's a report on all the recent developments Paytm Payments Bank has announced the resignation of its managing director and CEO Surinder Chawla Chawla resigned from his role citing personal reasons and a desire to explore new opportunities. The resignation is set to take effect from June 26, 2024. The development comes as Paytm's payments bank continues to terminate nearly all its agreements with Paytm as disclosed on March 1, 2024. In addition, the Paytm Payments Bank has reconstituted with five independent directors. After the resignation, Paytm has said in a statement that it will continue to collaborate with banking partners to enhance merchant acquiring and UPI services. The resignation follows the earlier decision of Paytm's founder and top executive Vijay Shekhar Sharma to step down as non-executive chairman of Paytm Payments Bank as part of a broader board overhaul. The changes were prompted after RBI took regulatory action against Paytm Payments Bank to wind down its operations by March 15th due to compliance issues and supervisory concerns. Despite these setbacks, Paytm has received a reprieve from India's Payments Authority which granted it a third party app license. This allows Paytm to continue facilitating payments even after the cessation of operations by its banking unit. Bureau report Republic TV. After reaching the record high of rupees of 75000 a day before Sensex was down by 0.08% at the closing bell yesterday. On the other hand Nifty also reached its record highest of 22768 in yesterday's trading but was eventually slightly down by 0.11%. 
The positive sentiment in the market is seen by many experts with a strong sense of confidence in the return of the BJP government after this year's Lok Sabha elections, which signals confidence in the stability of economic policies in India. However, even the global markets are soaring as investors anticipate a federal rate cut in the US later this June. Here is the latest from the markets. While Nifty and Sensex opened at record high levels yesterday, with Sensex breaching the 75,000 mark, the 30 share index fell by 521 points to 74,604 during the day's trading as investors turned to profit booking in auto, FMCG, PSU banks and consumer durable shares. During the session, Nifty also touched a record high of 22,768. However, it later touched an intraday low of 22,612 on account of profit booking. At close, the blue chip Nifty 50 index fell by 0.11% to 22,641, while BSE Sensex fell by 0.08% to 74,683. Analysts are attributing the current bull run in the market to a potential victory of the BJP in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections, indicating political and economic stability in India. Meanwhile, US markets are also trading near record high levels, which has led to a bullish sentiment towards equities globally. This comes as investors anticipate a rate cut after the Federal Reserve's meeting in June later this year in the United States. Pura Report, Republic TV. And here's getting you all the news and update from across the globe. Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs called for the immediate repeal of an Arizona Supreme Court ruling that permits enforcement of an 1864 law effectively banning abortion in the state. Her statement comes after court said that the state can enforce its long dormant law making abortion illegal in all cases except when a mother's life is at stake. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida began a much-anticipated vis visit to Washington that spotlights shared concerns about provocative Chinese military action in the Pacific and at a rare moment of public difference between the two nations over Japanese companies plan to buy an iconic U.S. company. He will later address a joint meeting of Congress tomorrow and will be the second Japanese leader to address the body. A group of steel workers protested outside Chile's presidential palace to demand higher tariffs on Chinese steel imports. The workers called attention to the survival of the steel company that provides jobs to some 22,000 people in the Bio, Bio region. The steel company also has plans to open a smaller plant dedicated to green steel using fuels with lower carbon emissions. British actor Kit Harrington has clarified that there's no plan for a sequel to Jon Snow's sequel. He said the plan is off the table for the, the foreseeable. He further stated that even though a few ideas were discussed, nothing really materialized. As a person with a ticket matching all six Powerball numbers of $1.3 billion jackpot came forward to claim the prize, Oregon lottery officials said that the winner of the eighth biggest lottery prize in U.S. history won't be announced for a few more weeks. The officials are verifying the win before arrangements are made for the massive payment. Well, viewers, it's time to slip into a very short break. Uh, stay tuned as coming up after the break is... In Washington, Japanese Prime Minister Kishida and Biden vow to strengthen military and economic ties.
New York Appeals Court judge rejects Donald Trump's latest attempt to delay his hush money criminal trial. जिन लोगों ने भ्रष्टाचार करके पैसे जमा किए हैं ना ईडी ने करीब 3000 करोड़ रुपया उनका संपत्ति और सारी चीजें अटैच करके रखी हुई है 3000 करोड़ रुपया तो जो 3000 करोड़ रुपए इनके अटैच किए हैं ना मैं इन गरीबों को वापस करवाऊंगा Minister is going to campaign here in the Everything coming days. Let him come to me constituency. I he wholeheartedly with him, with the red carpet. I myself will welcome him. Let him come. So, let him come and contest in my constituency. What is the problem? Hmm. So you are got, challenging him we, to contest here. If the particular prime minister has got guts, let him come and con contest in my constituency. You are challenging him to contest from this particular. I cannot challenge any. He is a very big man of this country. Very big, very big man of the whole world. Hmm. I cannot contest. I cannot contest his words or him personally. Hmm. He is my friend. Hmm. That is why I am inviting him fold, fold, with the folded hands. I am inviting him. What's your uh, say on the Kachitive Island issue which uh, Prime Minister has raised? He has leveled allegations on the Prime DMK. Prime Minister himself, well. he doesn't know what is what. Actually, do you agree that we two, two executives signed in an agreement holds good for two, uh, two uh, uh, in the international countries? It has got nothing to do with it. No, you see, if, if a particular piece of land of a particular country is handed over to the next country, it has to have a parliament nod. Parliament has not considered, parliament has not discussed. Then where is the chance to hand over the country, country's land to another country? It's all false, madam. Half past eight, uh, I'm Samiksha Srivastava. You're watching the Morning Express, tracking closely all election updates from across the country. First, the headlines. Prime Minister's uh, Tamil Nadu campaign continues, set to hold mega rallies for second straight day. Maan and Sanjay Singh's meet with Kejriwal cancelled as Tihar officials cite security reasons. After High Court's setback up, now knocks Supreme Court's door says hopeful for relief. Congress hits back with clean shit to China attack after Shah's Nehru said bye bye China.
After Ramdev uh, issued unconditional apology, Supreme Court to hear misleading ads uh, case today. Canadian Espionage Agency now claims China interfered with the last two elections won by Justin Trudeau. And we start this edition of uh, the Morning Express with the news break that's just coming in. This one from the national capital where Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Maan and, and the Aam Aadmi Party MP Sanjay Singh have been denied permission to meet Kejriwal who remains lodged in Delhi's Tehar Jail. Uh, in fact, note, while the security remains tight in Tehar Jail, uh, the permission has been denied by the Tehar uh, officials to Bhagwant Maan and Sanjay Singh. In fact, the meeting was to take place only after the officials set a new time for the meeting. Uh, the latest, of course, that is just coming in is that that meeting, uh, the permission has been denied for meet with Arvind Kejriwal. So, tracking all those updates very closely, uh, but note this comes a day after Delhi High Court also rejected that plea uh, of Arvind Kejriwal, uh, which sought relief uh, from the enforcement directorate. Uh, let's go across to Simran, who's on the ground, uh, tracking the latest. But Kejriwal, uh, in the latest note, will not be allowed to meet Sanjay Singh as well as uh, the Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Man. All right, let's cut across to Simran, who is uh, joining us. Uh, but we will just go across to Simran in a bit, uh, tracking all those updates very closely in Liquorgate Probe. Uh, the Aam Aadmi Party all set to move for top court after denial of uh, bail, rejection of that bail plea that was moved by Arvind Kejriwal. Now, with uh, less than 10 days to go for the Lok Sabha battle to begin, Prime Minister Modi is back in Tamil Nadu from Rameswaram to Tiruchapalli. The Prime Minister's campaign in the South has been unstoppable. His South mission that continues even today as he moves on to address public meetings in Vellore and other districts of uh, Tamil Nadu. Here are the highlights of his uh, roadshow in Chennai on Tuesday and what is expected today. With less than 10 days to go for Phase 1 of the Lok Sabha 2024 polls, Prime Minister Modi's Tamil outreach continues ahead. Over the last few months, the Prime Minister has visited Tamil Nadu and the South over a dozen times. From his temple visits in Rameshwaram, Dhanush Kodi, to Vikas drives in Tiruchipalli and Kalapakkam, Tamil Nadu has been modified. And today marks day two of the Prime Minister's South sojourn. Prime Minister Modi is set to attend a public meeting at Vellore and Mittu Palayam in Tamil Nadu. The NDA and its mega push for Vixit Tamil Nadu has laid the foundation stone of several projects. The PM has described that at the root of this connectivity with the state lies a larger vision of development in the southern region which would lead India on the path of Atmanir Bharta. Remember, all seats in Tamil Nadu go to polls in phase one. The Prime Minister's unstoppable poll blitz marks his relentless support for the BJP leaders set to contest in the state. With the kind of response the BJP is garnering on ground. The Saffron Party is confident of winds of change in the southern state. Your report, Republic TV. And uh, with that, here's a look at top stories in brief from across uh, the country. Uh, State Congress President Ajay Rai has called rumours of him joining the BJP baseless and said that when the people in BJP have no work, uh, then they speak such things, uh, further adding that the Congress will remove BJP from the state. This Bharti Anta Party, when people get no work, when they 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 get no work, so, 
समाजवादी पार्टी एमपी डिंपल यादव सेड दैट व्हेन इंडिया अलायंस वाज फॉर्म्ड द बीजेपी वाज वरीड द मोस्ट एडिंग दैट इंडिया अलायंस इज फाइटिंग द इलेक्शंस स्ट्रांगली एंड इज फाइटिंग द इलेक्शंस स्ट्रांगली एंड इज गेटिंग द स्ट्रांग सपोर्ट ऑफ द पीपल इंडिया गठबंधन जो है बहुत ही मजबूती के साथ पूरे देश में चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं और कट्टरता से लड़ रहे हैं और मुझे खुशी इस बात की है कि लोगों का समर्थन लगातार इंडिया गठबंधन को मिल रहा है मॉर्निंग आरती वॉज परफॉर्म्ड ऑन द सेकेंड डे ऑफ नवरात्रि एट द छतरपुर टेम्पल इन द नेशनल कैपिटल डेविटीज वो सीन थ्रॉगिंग मंदिर ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ नवरात्रि टू ऑफ अ प्रेस Delhi police uh, arrested a man for killing his uh, live-in partner due to continued pressure for marriage. Uh, the accused is said to be a notorious criminal who is involved in more than 10 cases including attempted murder and violations of the NDPS Act. The body of his live-in partner was found inside a wardrobe with strangulation marks on her body. A fire broke out in the mining headquarters uh, which is The mining building in Lucknow the fire was so terrible that its flames were visible from a distance uh fire tenders were on the spot to control the fire but there is uh, still uh, no information on those injured or any casualties A fire broke out in the forest of Srinagar city uh, of Pori district of Uttarakhand forest uh, area officer informed that the forest department team and the fire brigade teams are working uh, to douse the fire A massive road accident took place in Raipur after a bus fell into a 50 feet deep ditch at least uh, 12 passengers died while many others sustained injuries In a shocking incident an unidentified miscreant entered into wrestling arena and uh, attacked wrestlers with rods and sticks uh, visuals of which have also been captured on CCTV on your screens Now in a compelling saga of vengeance Dev Patel's electrifying thriller Monkey Ban made its grand debut on the big screens across North America Monkey Man Note is the second highest grossing film at the domestic box office last weekend making over 10 million dollars across more than 3000 theaters so uh, in fact this gripping tale once is uh, signed by Netflix found a new lease of uh, on life under the banner of Universal Pictures who swooped in with a 10 million dollars acquisition deal uh, Monkey Man unfolds as a riveting saga of blood passion and political intrigue plunging audiences into a heart pounding odyssey close your In a cinematic whirlwind that swept across North American theaters, Dev Patel's Monkey Man made a roaring entrance. I was a boy. My mother used to tell me. With a jaw-dropping 10.1 million dollars at the box office, Dev Patel made his first debut in Hollywood. To the land. Monkey Man was inspired by Hindu deity Hanuman, portraying his strength, loyalty, and courage. The film centers on the character named Kid played by Patel who makes a living working in an underground fight club who later seeks to avenge his mother's horrific death by infiltrating the elite class of a Mumbai like city. Please. This is not the place to work if you can't handle that. Sort of After the film was dropped by its original studio Netflix Universal Pictures acquired the film for 10 million dollars after Monkey Man failed to figure in Netflix's annual release calendar. I've got an answer to every prayer. I call on Netflix. Netflix, who paid a reputed 30 million dollars for the film, decided not to release it because as per reports, it was too grim for the Indian market, which they hoped to win. Monkey Man has yet to receive approval for release in India where Universal retains rights. Agency report Republic TV. Two, two, one, two, three.
Now the thrilling and uh, captivating movie uh, Manjumil Boys uh, which is based on a true story has received an extraordinary response at the box office. Uh, the Telugu dubbed version of the film saw a record breaking ticket sales on its opening day moreover in the Malayalam industry the film has set a new record for sustained access continuing to break records even 47 days after its release. <laughs> Chidambaram's Manumel Boys is currently the talk of the town among viewers. The movie has received an extraordinary response from the Telugu audience. The compelling performances of Srinath Bhasi and Sobin Shahir add depth and impact to the movie. With a steady performance, the film has earned collection of rupees 1.65 crores on its fourth day in the Telugu industry. And rupees 127 crores from the Malayalam industry. Globally, Manumel Boys has crossed over 226 crores, solidifying its status as an all-time blockbuster. The outstanding cinematography and the skillfully captured intense atmosphere of the caves give a real-life experience to the viewers. Chidambaram brought out the essence of the movie by incorporating a subtle yet impactful touch of drama. The movie not only delves into themes of survival but also explores the profound dynamics of friendship. Your report Republic TV. Now Netflix India has released uh, the trailer of director Sanjay Leela Bansali's web series Hira Mandi the Diamond Bazaar Fardeen Khan note is all set to make his return to screens after 14 years gap uh, the web series highlights the fight for independence uh, the movie will be released uh, on Netflix on 1st of May this year in fact the director uh, Sanjay Leela Bansali said that the series portrays love power freedom and extraordinary women their desires and struggles Hira Mandi mein Hira Mandi, the Diamond Bazaar, directed by Sanjay Leela Bhansali, is a lavish period drama set in pre-independence India. Since Guru pen de ne se aurat the wife nahi banti hai. The biggest Indian Netflix series of the year. Hira Mandi unveiled its epic first trailer 3 weeks ahead of its release in May. Kya feroz sa? Ab aadhe minute ka bhi insaan jatayenge aap. A fight for independence is also one of the important highlights of the show. Ek baar mujre wali nahi. Mulk wali ban kar sochi. The series is set in pre-independence India in the fictional district of Hira Mandi. Where Malika Jain, played by Manisha Koirala, rules over an elite house of courtesans. Nawab Zorabad Ali Khan, when Juta bhi marta hai, to Sone ka marta hai Malika Jain. The trailer is filled with all the resplendent imagery that Pansali's long-time fans have come to expect from him. Ye Malika Jain ka daaman hai. Itne se khun se iski pyaas nahi mujhe. The show will be released on Netflix on May first. इसी पपारे में बेजान नंगी तैरती नजर आए ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी इश्क और इंकलाब के बीच कोई फर्क नहीं होता And on that note, we head into a very short break. Coming up on the other side, all that's making news from across the country. Uh, Congress has hit back with clean shit to China attack after Amit Shah's Nehru said bye bye Jai. Also, after Ramdi issued unconditional apology, SC set to hear misleading advertisements case today. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the eleventh year by India Today, a testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. जिन लोगों ने भ्रष्टाचार करके पैसे जमा किए हैं ना ईडी ने करीब 3000 करोड़ रुपया उनका संपत्ति और सारी चीजें 
अटैच करके रखी हुई है तीन हजार करोड़ रुपया तो जो तीन हजार करोड़ रुपये इनके अटैच किए ना मैं इन गरीबों को वापस करवाऊंगा मार्च 2023 को सीआरपीएफ का लखापाल में हमने कैंप खुला था उस कैंप खुलने के बाद जो हमारा टीम्स जाती हैं एरिया डोमिनेशन की उस एरिया डोमिनेशन में हमने ये केरला पंडा गांव में एक पारा में देखा कि एक मंदिर है जो पुराना मंदिर था काफ़ी जीर्ण शीर्ण अवस्था में था उस मंदिर को देखने के बाद यहाँ से जब पूछताछ की, की गई गाँव वालों से पता चला तो ये पता चला कि एक, एक पुराना ऐतिहासिक मंदिर है और यहाँ पूर्व में मेला भी लगा वार्षिक मेला भी लगता लग था और आगे जानकारी जाने में पता हुआ कि दो सन दो में दो में नक्सलियों द्वारा इस मंदिर को क्षतिग्रस्त किया गया और इसको बंद करा दिया गया यहाँ पूजा पाठ सब बंद करा दिया गया और उन्हें इस मंदिर को काफ़ी नुकसान ही पहुँचाया उसके बाद कोई एक मंदिर का एक परिवार चोरी चुपे यहाँ पूजा करता रहा करता रहा कैब लगने के बाद ग्रामीणों को मैं थोड़ा उत्साह आया और उन्होंने सी से रिक्वेस्ट किया चौहत्तरी बटालियन से कि इस मंदिर का जीर्णोद्धार किया जाए तो काफ़ी सोच विचार के बाद इस मंदिर की साफ सफाई गाँव वालों के साथ मिलकर हमारी सी आर पी एफ की टीम्स ने करी चौहत्तर बटालियन की वाहि मा बटालियन ने और ग्रामीणों के साथ साफ सफाई करने के बाद अब ये मंदिर पुनः ग्रामीणों को सौंप दिया गया है और ये मंदिर पुनः ग्रामीण यहाँ रोजाना पूजा करने लगे हैं और अभी कुछ दिन पूर्व यहाँ गाँव की लेडीज लेडीज ने बच्चों ने भी यहाँ पर आकर शाम को पूजा अर्चना की है तो अब ये हमारा प्रयास ये रहेगा कि इस मंदिर के मंदिर के साथ साथ गाँव में भी पॉजिटिविटी और गांव के लोगों की में विकास के और रास्ते आगे की ठीक है धन्यवाद devastating conflict between Russia and Ukraine shows no signs of abating as vast swathes of land continue to be ravaged by warfare against this backdrop Ukraine's president Zelensky made a poignant visit to the Kharkiv region a region that currently faces intensified Russian air strikes uh, Zelensky's presence note underscores the gravity of the situation as he personally observed the construction of fortifications as well as defense structures near the Russia Ukraine border Ukraine's president Volodymyr Zelensky visited the Kharkiv region on Tuesday amid intensified Russian strikes against the region. Volodymyr Zelensky observed the building and fortification and defense constructions in the area close to the Russian border. While in Kharkiv, Zelensky awarded medals to the military. Маю честь сьогодні бути тут. Харкову не солодко. Але завдяки таким, як ви, людям, міцним людям, зберігається тут життя, і я впевнений, буде перемога у Харкові і в усій нашій державі. Just four days ago, tragedy struck as lives of six people were lost and 11 others were wounded in a barrage of overnight missile attacks on Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. The relentless assault left a trail of destruction, damaging residential buildings a gas station a kindergarten a cafe a shop and numerous vehicles as the day wore on kharkiv's mayor ihor terekhov reported yet another strike 
claiming another life and leaving one more individual injured. Meanwhile, in southern Odessa region, another civilian fell victim to a missile strike, according to reports from Governor Ola Kipper. Lives lost, families shattered and communities torn apart. These harrowing events underscore the relentless brutality of the ongoing conflict ravaging Ukraine. As the world watches on, the hope for an end to the violence remains ever-present. Yet, the path to resolution grows increasingly elusive. Even as calls for resolutions grow, toll of war continues to exact its devastating toll on innocent civilians. Agency Report, Republic TV Now getting you insights uh, from the world of space exploration as Russian space officials have uh, halted the test launch of a new heavy lift rocket from its far eastern launch pad. The Angara A5 rocket slated for liftoff from a space launch facility on Tuesday faced an unexpected setback as the launch was aborted just two minutes before its scheduled departure. Take a look at this report as we delve into the details surrounding this uh, development and its uh, implications for the Russia's space program. Russian space officials aborted the test launch of a new heavy lift rocket from its Far Eastern launch pad. The Angara A5 rocket was scheduled to lift off from the Vostochny Space Launch Facility at 0900 GMT Tuesday morning, but the launch was aborted just two minutes before liftoff. Yuri Barisov, the head of Roscosmos State Space Corporation, stated that the launch was automatically aborted due to a flaw detected in the oxidizer tank pressurization system by the safety system. Мы разберемся в окончательно в причинах и предварительно старт назначен на резервную дату на завтра. He said that the next launch attempt was set for today. Tuesday's planned launch marked the fourth attempt of the Angara A5, a heavy lift variant with new Angara rocket family aimed at replacing the Soviet era proton rockets. The previous three launches were conducted from the Plisetsk launch pad in northwestern Russia. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, Russia secured a lease agreement with Kazakhstan for the Balkinur Cosmodrome, where it continued the majority of its space operations. Under the lease agreement, Russia pays Kazakhstan 150 million annually to use the Balkanor Cosmodrome until 2050. While Balkanor remains a crucial launch site for Roscosmos, Vostochny has been designated as the preferred facility for Angara rocket launches. However, the construction of Vostochny has faced delays, resulting in limited utilization of the spaceport. Agency report. Republic TV. And uh, with that, it's a wrap on the Morning Express. Uh, coming up on live and breaking all election updates from across the country are tracking Prime Minister's campaign in the state of Tamil Nadu, where the Prime Minister is set to hold mega rallies for a second straight day. Man and Sanjay Singh's uh, meet with Kejriwal cancel as the hard officials cite security reasons. Ladies and gentlemen, Arvind Kejriwal's attempts to distance himself as far as possible from Liquor Gate, build a distance, stay away, not be associated, if required, blame it on Sisodia. All of that has failed. 
The Delhi High Court has directly linked him to the liquor scam conspiracy, saying he was part of the conspiracy. The Delhi High Court has upheld his arrest. And the Delhi High Court has said that Arvind Kejriwal was directly involved in the formulation of the liquor scam policy. And now if Arvind Kejriwal was involved in the formulation of the liquor scam policy, as the court is alleging, then he can no longer distance himself from the liquor scam. Therefore, till this afternoon, before what the court said, Arvind Kejriwal was presenting himself as a victim. Arvind Kejriwal and the AAP was presenting Kejriwal as someone who almost didn't know, was unaware of the whole scam, that there was a scam happening. He had no idea about it, that people were making money, crores were being made, siphoned. He had no idea. Arvind Kejriwal was innocent of all the information. But now, that the court is echoing what the ED has alleged. Who will believe Kejriwal or the Ahmadmi party? Maybe not even their own supporters. So far the allegations were of the ED. The allegations were of the government. But now the observations are of the Delhi High Court. Kejriwal's strategy has been to take an image of victimhood among the people. Now the same people will ask him why the court does not believe him. Why the court does not believe he's innocent? Why the court says that his arrest is completely legal? So what is the long and short of it, viewers? The long and short of it is that Kejriwal does not have either a legal or a moral defense tonight. And the worst thing that could have happened to Kejriwal is to have been linked by the court to the liquor scam conspiracy. Now let me ask you all tonight, all of you, and I know many of you, maybe even Kejriwal supporters. Let me ask all of you, including Kejriwal supporters, after what the courts have said today, after what the Delhi High Court has observed today, would even you, after what the courts have said, give Kejriwal the benefit of doubt? Yes, some of you will say, Arnab, he's not been convicted yet. Yes, I agree. But after what the court has said, he does not have the moral edge anymore. Nine years after PM Modi visited Tel A very good morning to all our viewers. You're watching Live and Breaking with me, Guinea Narula. Let's take a look at our top headlines at this hour. Prime Minister's Tamil Nadu campaign continues set to hold mega rallies for a second straight day. Man and Sanjay Singh's meeting with Kejwal cancelled as they are official side security reasons. After High Court setback, AAP now knocks the Supreme Court door, says hopeful for relief. Congress heads back with clean shit to China attack after Shah's Nehru said bye bye jibe. After Ramdev issued unconditional apologies, Supreme Court to hear misleading ads case today. Canadian espionage agency claims China interfered with last two elections won by Trudeau. Well, we are the latest coming in. We are getting a big lead in connection to the Liquorgate investigation. Arvind Kejriwal has moved to the Supreme Court, challenging the High Court order. 
Kejriwal is seeking urgent hearing in Supreme Court, preferably today at 10.30 a.m., which is uh, just a short while from now. Remember, viewers, this comes a day after the Delhi High Court rejected Kejriwal's plea, challenging ED's arrest and remand. Now, Arvind Kejriwal is planning to move uh, the Supreme Court after the High Court has rejected his plea. He is quite hopeful of getting a relief from the Supreme Court. Now, there's a big lead in connection to the Liquor Gate investigation. Arvind K. Jival has moved the Supreme Court. This is the latest that we are getting in. He has challenged the High Court order. K. Jival is seeking an urgent hearing today itself around 10.30 a.m. Now, remember viewers, this comes a day after the Delhi High Court rejected K. Jival's plea challenging ED's arrest and remand. He will move the Supreme Court against a High Court order dismissing the plea against his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate in a money laundering case linked to the alleged excise scam. My colleague Aditya is joining us. Uh, going across to you, Aditya, now uh, the latest that has come in is that Arvind Kejriwal is going to move the Supreme Court and he is quite hopeful that the Supreme Court will give him relief. Now take us through the key pointers as to why the High Court rejected his plea. Uh, well, uh, as per the ED, uh, he, uh, Karvin Kejriwal is the kingpin uh, in this uh, excise case and you know some, uh, what has happened is that uh, the, the ED has also alleged that uh, has said that uh, K. Kavita was the kingpin of the southern cartel. So uh, yesterday challenging the decision of the high court, Kejriwal has moved the supreme court for his release. So now today uh, Kejriwal's team is uh, trying, to, the team of the uh, lawyers of Kejriwal are trying that the case is heard as soon as by 10.30 at the Chief Justice Court so that, you know, the initial proceedings are initiated in this matter and it, it, this needs to be seen as to whether he, whether his court is, uh, whether his case is uh, uh, heard uh, or is it not. So what we needs to be seen at what, how uh, will the events will uh, turn uh, in the, in the day, uh, in the, in the days to come and let's see as to what uh, decision uh, what happens today we are uh, outside uh, the Ketival and, and it needs to be seen as to what uh, what what is the way forward so uh, on yesterday the high court has dismissed that uh, he will not be given bail and his correct is uh, and his arrest is correct back to you Right, Aditya, thanks for getting us uh, those updates. Of course, uh, we will be keeping a close watch on whether the Supreme Court agrees for a hearing today itself. Now, we are getting in more news from the national capital, Punjab uh, Chief Minister Bhagwant Man and top art leader Sanjay Singh won't be able to meet Kejriwal today as the Har jail officials have cited security reasons. The meeting will take place only after the officials set a new time for the meeting. Now, remember viewers, uh, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Man was scheduled to meet Arvind Kejriwal in Tihar jail today. The meeting uh, was supposed to take place today itself, but the latest update is that the meeting is not going to happen and uh, Tihar jail officials have cited security reasons. My colleague Simran is joining us. Uh, Simran, a very good morning to you now. Uh, the latest that has come in that uh, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Man will not be going ahead with the meeting uh, of, with Arvind K. Jival and the Tihar jail officials have cited security reasons. So take us uh, through what else have you gathered? 
well definitely right now the status quo of the meeting between the delhi chief minister who's lodged in the tihar jail and the punjab chief minister bhagwant man which was due to take place today has been uh, called off has been cancelled as well uh, citing the security reasons at the tihar jail uh, the officials have not given permission for the meeting to be concluded also and it's very important to look that this was the meeting that was going to happen uh, after sanjay singh had went to chandigarh to meet punjab cm bhagwant man first time after he was released uh, from the jail after he was granted the bail and uh, this is the meeting that both the senior and the senior most dignitaries of the aam aadmi party were going to take place with delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal within the tihar jail as of now the arvind kejriwal continues to be under the jail scrutiny and his wife continues to go and visit him he's allowed home cook uh, food but right now the tihar jail officials have officially not permitted uh, the meeting to happen or uh, a new date will be given this week later uh, after you know the security reasons will be observed and with due consideration it will be decided that when is the time when it's going to be also feasible and most importantly safe as well for the punjab chief minister and sanjay singh to meet delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal within the jail premises also a quick uh, important uh, note that needs to be taken away from the aam aadmi party uh, today because it's going to be very crucial to see in the hours to come a protest call that has been given by the bjp at the aam aadmi party from where currently i'm speaking to you back at my back you can see that the aam aadmi party office at the ddu mark will witness the protest which has been given a call from the bjp against uh, against the delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal and demanding his resignation now this comes just a day after delhi chief minister uh, from the high court was not given a relief we saw it was a setback for him how the delhi high court has upheld that his arrest was not illegal back to you appreciate uh, your getting us those details as uh, simran and now uh, we'll keep a close watch as to when the new time of the meeting is set between bhagwat man and arvind kejriwal moving across uh, to uh, getting you more news and updates across the globe state congress president ajay rai called rumors of him joining the bjp baseless and said that when the people in bjp have no work they speak such things he further said that congress will remove bjp from the state ye bhartiya janta party ke jo log hain jab unko koi kaam nahi milta jab wo ghabra jate hain pareshan ho jate hain to yahi sab halla udate hain samajwadi party mp dimple yadav said that when india alliance was formed the bjp was worried the most she added that india alliance is fighting the elections very strongly and is getting the support of the people <coughs> india gathbandhan jo hai bahut hi mazbooti ke sath pure desh mein chunav lad rahe hain aur kattarta se lad rahe hain aur mujhe khushi is baat ki hai ki logo ka samarthan lagatar india gathbandhan ko mil raha hai Morning Aarti were performed on the second day of Navratri at Chhatrapur Temple in Delhi. Devotees are thronging mandirs on Navratri to offer their prayers. Delhi police arrested a man for killing his live-in partner due to continued pressure for marriage. The accused is said to be a notorious criminal who is involved in over 10 cases including attempted murder and violations of NDPS act. The body of his live-in partner was found inside a wardrobe with strangulation marks on her body. A fire broke out in the mining headquarters that is mineral building in Lucknow. The fire was so terrible that its flames were visible from a distance. Many fire tenders are on the spot to control the fire. However, it is not yet known what caused the fire. A fire broke out in the forests of Srinagar city of Pauri district of Uttarakhand. 
Forest Area Officer informed that the Forest Department team and the Fire Brigade teams are working to douse the fire. A massive road accident took place in Raipur after a bus fell into 50 feet deep ditch. At least 12 passengers died while many are sustained uh, injuries. According to reports, more than 40 people were travelling in the bus when the accident happened. In a shocking incident, unidentified miscreants entered into the wrestling arena and attacked wrestlers with rods and sticks visuals of which have been captured in the CCTV cameras. Now, teams have been formed to get hold of the miscreants that are identified in this act. Now, viewers, uh, with less than 10 days to go for the Lok Sabha battle to begin, Prime Minister Modi is back in Tamil Nadu. From Rameshwaram to Tiruchirappalli, the Prime Minister's campaign in the South has been unstoppable. His South mission continues today as he moves on to address public meetings in Vellore and Metu Palayam. Here's a report. Take a listen. With less than 10 days to go for phase one of the Lok Sabha 2024 polls, Prime Minister Modi's Tamil outreach continues ahead. Over the last few months, the Prime Minister has visited Tamil Nadu and the South over a dozen times. From his temple visits in Rameshwaram, Dhanush Kodi, to Vikas drives in Tiruchipalli and Kalapakkam, Tamil Nadu has been modified. And today marks day two of the Prime Minister's South sojourn. Prime Minister Modi is set to attend a public meeting at Vellore and Mittupalayam in Tamil Nadu. The NDA and its mega push for Viksit Tamil Nadu has laid the foundation stone of several projects. The PM has described that at the root of this connectivity with the state lies a larger vision of development in the southern region which would lead India on the path of Atmanirbharta. Remember, all seats in Tamil Nadu go to polls in phase one. The Prime Minister's unstoppable poll blitz marks his relentless support for the BJP leaders set to contest in the state. With the kind of response the BJP is garnering on ground. The Saffron Party is confident of winds of change in the southern state. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Now, viewers, with markets set to open, let's also take a look at all top business stories making headlines at the moment. Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of Paytm Bank Surinder Chavla tendered his resignation from his post on account of personal reasons and cited his desire to explore new career opportunities. The company said the resignation would be effective from June 26 but did not comment on any potential successor to Chavla. The company highlighted the developments came as PPBL continued to terminate nearly all agreements between Paytm and PPBL. Indian stock market benchmarks, the Sensex and the Nifty 50 ended lower after hitting their fresh record high on April 9th. Investors turn to profit booking at higher levels as they wait the US inflation numbers. Putting a break on its record-breaking rally, the 30-share BSE Sensex declined by 0.08%. Experts said the fall towards the closing was due to the profit booking. Emerging market stocks soared to their highest level in over a year in Taiwan. The remarkable surge in Taiwan stocks are driven by chipmaker TSMC. Taiwan stocks hit a record high led by a 4.6% jump in shares of TSMC. The MCSI index for emerging market stocks gained 0.5%, briefly touching levels unseen since January 2023. 
According to the International Monetary Fund, domestic stocks in emerging economies in the G20 are increasingly impacting growth in the rich world. Those countries ranging from China, the world's second largest economy, to default-prone Argentina have become so embedded in the global economy that they are no longer simply on the receiving end of global shocks. Interconnectedness of economies underlines both risks posed to the rich world by shocks in distant nations and the potential benefits if these economies rebound. Microsoft is planning to invest $2.9 billion over two years to expand its cloud and AI infrastructure in Japan. The latest in a series of overseas expansions by large tech firms to support the development of artificial intelligence. The investment is set to be the company's largest in the 46 years of its operations in the country. Microsoft will also go towards skilling 3 million people in AI and setting up a Microsoft Research Asia lab in Tokyo. As part of initiative, Microsoft tends to deploy advanced AI semiconductor technology at two existing facilities in eastern and western Japan. Tesla CEO Elon Musk highlighted on the inevitability of electric cars gaining traction in India. Elon Musk has said India, like every other country, should have electric car and it will be a natural progression for his company to foray into India's electric vehicle market. Dropping a hint at tech Tesla's expansion into India, the team is exploring opportunities in different states across India, particularly focusing on Maharashtra, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. Tesla aims to benefit from India's policy to lower taxes on electric cars produced by companies investing in India. Now let's get a quick update on markets. Nifty and Sensex are likely to open higher on strong global queues and there's a big focus on inflation in United States and corporate earnings. Let's cut across to Rajat from our business desk to know more. Uh, so uh, today, as expected, the market has opened in the positive territory and the Nifty uh, uh, is 73.45 points up uh, to 22,716. Similarly, the Sensex uh, is up to 270 points and is trading at 74,953. So the top gainers uh, of the today's uh, market opening are the Tata Steel, Bharti, Airtel, Hindalco, Coal India, Reliance and Bajaj Finance. As far as uh, top losers are concerned, Divis Lab, HDFC Bank, Adani Port, Sun Pharma and Grassim and Mahindra and Mahindra are the top losers. So as expected, uh, so the Indian markets uh, took a global cues and and as far as the uh, US, US stock market is concerned, uh uh, you, the, the Nasdaq and S&P 500 posted modest gains on Tuesday, a day ahead of a major inflation data. So uh, the, the market is factoring in the US inflation data which is due today and also uh, the, uh, as far as Indian markets are concerned, they are also factoring in the CPI inflation data which is supposed to come tomorrow uh, on April uh, 12th with in the index of industrial production data which is also due tomorrow uh, as far as Indian uh, data is concerned. Also this week, two, two crucial things uh, European Central Bank is going to take decision on the interest rate and the US inflation which is expected to come in at 3.4% which is higher than what was uh, seen in uh, February at 3.2% is going to pave the way for US Fed how they are going to cut the rate. So markets are factoring in the US Fed data. The uh, CPI data which is due for India is also supposed to come tomorrow with index of industrial production uh, and also the corporate earnings. We also know that Indian companies are slipping into the Q4 earning season and TCS is going to be the first company which is going to disclose their Q4 results. So that is also somewhere driving the markets uh, uh, this time and the markets are factoring in. So what remains to be seen as the US inflation data which is expected to come in at 3.4%, uh, how that data is going to pan out and uh, how that is going to uh, impact uh, the stock market. Impact, uh, the stock market. Right, Raja, thank you for getting us uh, those updates. Now, viewers, shifting focus to other news. Often seen celebrating India's culture and traditions, 
U.S. envoy to India hailed India's development model while he called on people to visit India and see the future of the world. Listen in to the U.S. envoy. Those who want to see the future, those who want to feel the future, come to India. Well, these are the words of U.S. envoy to India, Eric Garcetti. Listen in as the U.S. envoy said he feels privileged to work with India as leader of U.S. mission. Of the passion, of the belief, of the purpose, of the peace that you live in the work that is done by IPE and the collaboration between so many of us that are lucky to call uh, India our home for a period of our lives. I often say if you want to see the future, come to India. If you want to feel the future, come to India. And if you want to work on the future, come to India. And I have the great privilege of being able to do that every single day as a leader of the United States mission. Last month, Eric Garcetti had highlighted the significance of India-US partnership, saying that Joe Biden had told him that India is the most important country in the world. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Now, viewers, getting you all the latest from the world of sports. Indian pair of uh, Satvik Sairaj, Ranika Reddy and Chirag Shetty won yet another gold on the global stage and made the country proud. The pair won first ever medal for India in men's doubles at the Asian Games in 41 years. India finished the Asian Games 2022 with a medals tally of 107 medals. Today's IPL match between Rajasthan Royals and Gujarat Titans promises a clash of fortunes. The Rajasthan Royals will be hosting Gujarat Titans at the Savai Man Singh Stadium in Jaipur. Rajasthan Royals currently leads the points table with four wins while Gujarat Titans struggle in the middle with three losses and two victories. Rajasthan and Gujarat have played five IPL matches so far where Rajasthan Royals have won only one of those and Gujarat Titans have won four. Punjab FC will face East Bengal in their final match of Indian Super League today. The match will be played at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium. Tennis player Serena Williams has to book a two book deal with Random Publishing House starting with an intimate memoir in which she will open up about everything from her childhood to tennis training. The book is not titled yet and does not have a release date. Now, viewers, it's time to slip into a very short break, but stay tuned as coming up after this break. After Ramdev issued unconditional apology, Supreme Court to hear misleading ads case today. Canadian espionage agency claims China interfered with last two elections won by Trudeau. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 11th year by India Today, a testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. मोदी कहता है कि पैसा सीधे लाभार्थी के बैंक खाते में जाए लेकिन टीएमसी कह रही है कि केंद्र का पैसा पहले उनके खाते में आए अब आप मुझे बताइए जनता के हक का पैसा मैं टीएमसी को कैसे लूटने दूं Day is synonymous with holiday, a day off in most countries except in Germany, where it is not just rest but it is considered sacred. The Sunday rest is followed so strictly that it has been enshrined in law. 
and this law is applicable not only to humans but to robots as well. It all started with a legal battle brewing over the observance of Sunday rest. Tegut, a renowned retailer known for its innovative automated stores, found itself at the center of controversy. Tegut's futuristic automated stores are popular among consumers seeking convenience, especially on Sundays. However, a recent court ruling has mandated that even these automated stores must observe Sunday rest. The legal dispute was triggered by Germany's service sector union Verdi, citing the importance of guaranteed time off for workers, a caveat protected by the German constitution itself. However, Tegut contends that its automated stores should be exempt from Sunday shopping restrictions. When automated stores are not run by humans, why is Germany adamant on protecting the rights of robots? If Tegut is allowed to be open, other stores might reconsider. This may derail the concept of Sunday rest, especially in Germany. The move to rest robots on Sundays has stoked a controversy because a legal tussle continues to rage on as we speak. Agency Report, Republic TV. Uttar Pradesh mein do ladkon ki jo film pichli baar flop ho chuki hai, us do ladkon ki film ko in logon ne phir se release kiya hai. Mujhe samajh nahi aata. अरे काट की हांडी को ये इंडी गठबंधन वाले कितनी बार चढ़ाएंगे Minister is going to campaign here in the Very coming nice. days. Let him come to my constituency. I am wholeheartedly with him. With the red carpet, I myself will welcome him. Let him come. So, Let him come and contest in my constituency. What is the problem? Hmm. So you are got, challenging him we, to contest here? If the particular Prime Minister has got guts, let him come and con contest in my constituency. You are challenging him to contest from this particular I cannot challenge any. He is a very big man of this country. Very big, uh, very big man of the whole world. Hmm. I cannot contest. I cannot contest his words or him. Personally, hmm. he is my friend. Hmm. That is why I am inviting him, fold, folding with the folded hands. I am inviting him. What's your uh, say on the Kachitiwe Island issue, which uh, Prime Minister has raised? He has leveled allegation on the Prime DMK. Prime Minister aspect. himself, he doesn't know what is what. Actually, do you agree that we two two executives signed in an agreement holds good for two uh, two uh, 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 international countries? It does got Thanks for watching. Thank you for tuning in. You're watching live and breaking at half past nine. I'm Suesha Sound. We get you all the top stories making news this morning. First, a quick check of the headlines. Preparations in full swing as Velour awaits Prime Minister's mega rally. Prime Minister shares glimpses of roadshow in Chennai. BJP says Modi magic has gripped Tamil Nadu. BJP MLA Rameshwar Sharma courts controversy says Congress veteran Digvijay Singh will be sent to Pakistan. MBA urges EC to cancel candidate of Maharashtra Minister Sudhir Mungantiwar after incest slur on Congress. Minister Yogi to campaign in Katua today, first visit to Jammu and Kashmir after assuming office.
And well, with less than 10 days to go for the Lok Sabha battle to begin, Prime Minister Modi is back in Tamil Nadu. From Rameshwaram to Tiruchirappalli, Prime Minister's campaign in the South has been unstoppable. His South mission continues today as he moves on to address public meetings in Bellore and Metupalaya, getting you all the details of what is slated. With less than 10 days to go for Phase 1 of the Lok Sabha 2024 polls, Prime Minister Modi's Tamil outreach continues ahead. Over the last few months, the Prime Minister has visited Tamil Nadu and the South over a dozen times. From his temple visits in Rameshwaram, Dhanush Kodi, to Vikas drives in Tiruchipalli and Kalapakkam, Tamil Nadu has been modified. And today marks day two of the Prime Minister's South sojourn. Prime Minister Modi is set to attend a public meeting at Vellore and Mittupalayam in Tamil Nadu. The NDA and its mega push for Viksit Tamil Nadu has laid the foundation stone of several projects. The PM has described that at the root of this connectivity with the state lies a larger vision of development in the southern region which would lead India on the path of Atmanirbharta. Remember, all seats in Tamil Nadu go to polls in phase one. The Prime Minister's unstoppable poll blitz marks his relentless support for the BJP leaders set to contest in the state. With the kind of response the BJP is garnering on ground. The Saffron Party is confident of winds of change in the southern state. Your report, Republic TV. And we now get you all the election updates in this next news wrap in brief. Continuing his poll campaign for the upcoming Lok Sabha, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will today hold public programs in Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra. In Maharashtra, he will show his support for not only BJP but also the candidates of Alliance Partners. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath will kickstart BJP's mega campaign from Katwa today. This will mark Yogi Adityanath's first visit to the Union Territory after CM Yogi's visit to Katwa. Prime Minister Modi is scheduled to address a mega election rally at Modi Stadium in Udhampur on the 12th of April. Union Home Minister Amit Shah will address two public rallies in West Bengal and Bihar. Amit Shah will first address a rally at Dalatpur in West Bengal and then travel to Bihar when he will address another rally at Guraru in the Gaya district under the Aurangabad Lok Sabha constituency. Shiv Sena UBT leader Anand Dubey launched a scathing attack at MNS, saying that MNS neither has leaders nor voters or workers. He said that Raj Thakre works as the B team of the BJP. Raj Thakre ji, Bharati Janata Party ki B team bankar kam karte hai. Is sab ko pata hai. Ab chahe khul kar kam kariye aur chahe piche se unke liye madad kari. चाहे खेल के मैदान में उनके साथ खेलिए चाहे मैदान के बाहर से उनके साथ खेलिए खेलना तो आपको उन्हीं के साथ था यह पूरे महाराष्ट्र की जनता को मालूम था पूरे देश की जनता को मालूम था कि आज राज ठाकरे जी क्या घोषणा करने वाले हैं Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu said that the attempt made by Jairam Thakur to topple the government using money is a murder of democracy he said that people will announce their decision on the 1st of June जो तो सरकार जनता के बोर्ड पर चुनकर आई उस सरकार को नोट के दम पर गिराने की कोशिश जो जयराम ठाकुर जी ने की है जो लोकतंत्र की हत्या की है हिमाचल का जनमानस जागरूक है हर पांच बाद पांच साल के बाद सरकार को बदलता है और पांच साल के लिए उस सरकार को बनाता भी है अब हिमाचल की जनता एक जून को तय करेगी कि क्या उनको पैसे के दम वाली विधायक चाहिए जो बिकते हैं 
BSP President and UP Minister Om Prakash Rajbhar said that people who formed the India Alliance like Nitish Kumar, Jayan Chaudhary and Mamta Banerjee have left it. He further said that India Alliance is struggling and will lose the upcoming Lok Sabha polls. Moving on, this week marks a historic moment as Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida makes his first official visit to the White House, the first state visit of a Japanese leader since former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe came to the nation's capital in 2015. That was nine years ago. President Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida are expected to discuss everything from increased military cooperation to Japan's participation in a NASA mission. Getting you all the details in this report. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida landed in the US on Tuesday and began a much anticipated visit to the country. Kishida and his wife visited the White House where they were hosted by President Biden and his wife who gave them a warm welcome. Joe Biden also took to social media to share a picture with Japanese PM saying, great to have you back in the state, Mr. Prime Minister. Ahead of the White House visit, Kishida led a wrath at Arlington National Cemetery and stopped by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and met with Microsoft's Vice Chairman and President Brad Smith. Biden and Kishida held talks and took part in a joint news conference over strengthening military and economic ties. あ、日米がグローバルなパートナーであるということ。え、世界の国際社会の様々な課題を共にまあリードをしていく存在であるということ。え、そしてそのためにも、え、日米関係があの一層盤石なものであるということ。え、これをま確認したいと思いますし、それ
ऑफ सात्विक साईराज रंकी रेड्डी एंड चिराग शेट्टी वन येर एन अदर गोल्ड ऑन द ग्लोबल स्टेज एंड मेड द कंट्री प्राउड द पेयर वन फर्स्ट एवर मेडल फॉर इंडिया इन मेन्स डबल्स एट द एशियन गेम्स इन फोर्टी वन ईयर्स इंडिया फिनिश द एशियन गेम्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू विद मेडल टैली ऑफ हंड्रेड एंड सेवन मेडल्स IPL match between Rajasthan Royals and Gujarat Titans promises a clash of fortunes. Rajasthan Royals will be hosting Gujarat Titans at the Savai Man Singh Stadium in Jaipur. Rajasthan Royals currently leads the points table with 4 wins with Gujarat Titans struggling in the middle with 3 losses and 2 victories. Rajasthan and Gujarat have played 5 IPL matches so far where Rajasthan Royals have won only one of those and Gujarat Titans have won 4. Punjab FC will face East Bengal in their final match of Indian Super League today the match will be played at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium Tennis player Serena Williams has two book deal with Random Publishing House starting with an immediate intimate memoir in which she will open up about everything from her childhood to her tennis training the book is not yet titled and does not have a release date And well viewers the thrilling and captivating movie Manjumal Boys which is based on a true story has received an extraordinary response at the box office the Telugu dubbed version of the film saw record breaking ticket sales on its opening day moreover in the Malayalam industry the film has set a new record for sustained success continuing to break records even 47 days after its release here's a report <laughs> Chidambaram's Manumal Boys is currently the talk of the town among viewers. The movie has received an extraordinary response from the Telugu audience. The compelling performances of Srinath Bhasi and Sobin Shahir add depth and impact to the movie. With a steady performance, the film has earned collection of rupees 1.65 crores on its fourth day in the Telugu industry. And rupees 127 crores from the Malayalam industry. Globally, Manumal Boys has crossed over 226 crores, solidifying its status as an all-time blockbuster. The outstanding cinematography and the skillfully captured intense atmosphere of the caves give a real-life experience to the viewers. Chidambaram brought out the essence of the movie by incorporating a subtle yet impactful touch of drama. The movie not only delves into themes of survival but also explores the profound dynamics of friendship. Bureau Report, Republic TV. On that note, we slip into a short commercial break. Also, taking a quick check of the big stories lined up on the other side as uh, after. that high court set back the aam aadmi party now knocks supreme court door says hopeful for relief after randev issued an unconditional apology supreme court is all set to hear misleading ads case today Uh, they produce uh, content uh, relating to the activities of the monkeys, and they have fed the monkeys with food in which, whereas the monkey should be left alone, whereas the monkey should be living in the 
in the wall where they supposed to be uh, live. This is the problem for us. Uh, we need to uh, find solid uh, uh, reasons in which we can use against them and to prevent them not to make uh, content on by abusing the, uh, the monkey. ແລະບໍ່ຍົ້ມຖອດຕາຕາມເປີຍຕາມດົບຍົ້ມແຕ່ບັນປາປາລະເລື່ອງດຶງເລືອລືຫັງຖືບັບບໍ່ຍົ້
by India Today, a testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. हासिल करके रहता है आज इसी प्रेरणा से इसी ऊर्जा से भारत के लोग हम लोग विकसित भारत के संकल्प पर काम कर रहे हैं सारी दुनिया की मुश्किलों के बीच भारत ये दिखा रहा है कि उसके लिए कुछ भी असंभव नहीं है आप मुझे बताइए साथियों भारत जब दुनिया की सबसे तेजी से बढ़ती आर्थिक ताकत बना तो आपको गर्व हुआ कि नहीं हुआ आपको गर्व हुआ कि नहीं हुआ हमारे चंद्रयान ने जब चांद पर तिरंगा फहराया तो आपको गर्व हुआ कि नहीं हुआ आपको गर्व हुआ कि नहीं हुआ भारत में हुए भव्य जी ट्वेंटी सम्मेलन की पूरी दुनिया में वाहवाही हुई प्रशंसा हुई आपको गर्व हुआ कि नहीं हुआ कभी कांग्रेस सरकारें दुनिया से मदद मांगती थी लेकिन कोरोना के महासंकट में भारत ने पूरी दुनिया में दवाइयां भेजी वैक्सीन भेजी ये सुनकर आपको गर्व हुआ कि नहीं हुआ इन इंडी गठबंधन वालों को राम मंदिर के निर्माण से पहले भी नफरत थी और आज भी नफरत है चलो भाई आपने मंदिर बनने से रोकने के लिए अदालत में जो करना था कर लिया आपने मंदिर न बने इसके लिए लाख कोशिश कर ली लेकिन जब देश की जनता ने पाई पाई देख Let's now take a quick check of what's making news in the world of entertainment. Netflix India unveiled the trailer of director Sanjay Leela Bhansali's web series Hira Mandi, The Diamond Bazaar. Fardeen Khan is all set to make his return to screen. After 14 years, the web series highlights the fight for independence. Hira Mandi will be released uh, on Netflix on the 1st of May 2024. Bhansali said that the series portrays love, power, freedom and extraordinary women, their desires and struggles. Malayalam blockbuster Manjubal Boys is back in the spotlight with its debut in the Telugu states. The movie this time is conquering the Telugu box office. Manjubal Boys is a survival drama inspired by real life incidents hitting the screens on the 22nd of February. It's already been creating waves by claiming the title for the biggest opening of a Malayalam film ever in Telugu cinema's history with fantastic reviews from critics and audiences the film's success story continues with its telugu version and as we slip into a short commercial break on the other side we'll get you all the details on prime minister's tamil nadu campaign that continues as he's set to hold mega rallies for the second straight day Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen Arvind Kejriwal's attempts 
to distance himself as far as possible from liquor gate build a distance stay away not be associated if required blame it on sisodia all of that has failed the delhi high court has directly linked him to the liquor scam conspiracy saying he was part of the conspiracy the delhi high court has upheld his arrest and the delhi high court has said that arvind kejriwal was directly involved in the formulation of the liquor scam policy and now if arvind kejriwal was involved in the formulation of the liquor scam policy as the court is alleging then he can no longer distance himself from the liquor scam therefore till this afternoon before what the court said arvind kejriwal was presenting himself as a victim arvind kejriwal and the aap was presenting kejriwal as someone who almost didn't know was unaware of the whole scam that there was a scam happening he had no idea about it that people were making money crores were being made siphon he had no idea arvind kejriwal was innocent of all the information but now that the court is echoing what the ed has alleged who will believe kejriwal or the aam aadmi party maybe not even their own supporters so far the allegations were of the ed the allegations were of the government but now the observations are of the delhi high court kejriwal strategy has been to take an image of victimhood among the people now the same people will ask him why the court does not believe him why the court does not believe he is innocent why the court says that his arrest is completely legal so what is the long and short of it viewers the long and short of it is that kejriwal does not have either a legal or a moral defense tonight and the worst thing that could have happened to kejriwal is to have been linked by the court to the liquor scam conspiracy now let me ask you all tonight all of you and i know many of you maybe even kejriwal support let me ask all of you including kejriwal supporters after what the courts have said today after what the delhi high court has observed today would even you after what the courts have said give kejriwal the benefit of doubt yes some of you will say arnab is not been convicted yet yes i agree but after what the court has said he does not have the moral edge anymore to all our viewers you're watching live and breaking with me Gini Narula let's see the top headlines we're tracking at this hour Prime Minister Tamil Nadu campaign continues set to hold mega rallies for a second straight day Man and Sanjay Singh's meeting with Kejriwal cancelled as they have official site security reasons After high court setback up now knocks supreme court door says hopeful for relief Dogs attack man in Karnataka's uh, Bagal court concerns mount over stray dog menace After Ramdev issued unconditional apologies Supreme Court to hear misleading ads case today Canadian espionage agency claims China interfered with last two elections won by Trudeau
Now, viewers, an elderly man sustained injuries after being attacked by a pack of stray dogs in Bagalkot district of Karnataka on Sunday. The incident happened in the Gandhi Chowk area of the city when the man was returning home alone. The CCTV footage of the incident showed at least five to six dogs attacking the man as he tried to shoo them away. Following the incident, the man was rushed to hospital where he was undergoing treatment. Now, viewers, you can see uh, the CCTV footage on the screen. Uh, the, the man is trying to chase away the dogs and he's being attacked by a pack of dogs. And viewers, this is not the first such incident. We have also heard of such incidents happening in the past in various cities. Now, this is... Uh, the visual of an elderly man who sustained injuries after being attacked by a pack of stray dogs in Karnataka on Sunday. This happened in Gandhi Chowk area of the city. This is in Bagalkot district of Karnataka when the man was returning home alone. Well, we are getting another news update. Uh, there's a big lead in connection to the Liquor Gate investigation. Arvind Kejriwal has moved Supreme Court challenging the High Court order. Kejriwal is seeking urgent hearing in Supreme Court, preferably uh, at 10.30 a.m., which is just a short while from now. Remember, viewers, this comes a day after the Delhi High Court rejected Kejriwal's plea challenging ED's arrest and remand. Now, K. Jival has moved the Supreme Court to, and he's hopeful of getting relief from the Supreme Court. He's seeking an urgent hearing today itself. Now, this comes a day after the Delhi High Court rejected his plea. The Delhi High Court dismissed his plea. And now another news again related to Arvind Kejriwal. We are getting in more news from the national capital. <coughs> Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Man and top up leader Sanjay Singh won't be able to meet uh, Kejriwal today as the Har jail officials have cited security reasons. The meeting will take place only after the officials set a new time for the meeting. Now, the latest coming in uh, from the national capital viewers, Bhagwant Aman, Punjab Chief Minister, was scheduled to meet Arvind Kejriwal today. But uh, the Har uh, jail officials have cited security reasons and they have said uh, that the meeting will take place only after the officials set a new time for the meeting. Along with Bhagwan Man, Sanjay Singh was also supposed to meet um, Kejriwal. But the meeting has the meeting has uh, been uh, rather postponed because of uh, security re reasons. Uh, going across to my colleague Simran. Simran, now the latest that is just coming in is that Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwan Man uh, is not going to meet uh, Kejriwal and Sanjay Singh was also to accompany him but the Har jail officials have cited security reasons. Take us through the details you've gathered. 
Well, yes, definitely. Most certainly, there was a meeting on the cards today between the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Maan, accompanied by senior AAP leader uh, Sanjay Singh. But what has actually unfolded in the early hours of today as well that even after saying that the meeting will take place today at the Hard Shell at 1 p.m., the meeting has been postponed. A new date is going to be given from the Tihar jail security officials and the administration because uh, keeping the view of security and citing the proper tight security arrangements and uh, the very important uh, uh, arrangements for also making and accommodating uh, Punjab Chief Minister uh, Bhagwant Man's security within the jail premises, it has been decided that a new date is going to come up and also uh, now later in this week what we can see uh, there that the meeting between the Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Man and uh, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal will be taking place because today it was on the cards. This happened after Sanjay Singh went to meet uh, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Man first time after his release from the jail and it was actually been looking forward like a, a huge reunion in, in fact as well uh, for the Ahmadmi party in fact within the jail premises for whatever little time that the authorities would allow but later in this week what we are going to also see that the meeting will take place surely uh, as of now it is expected that there is going to be a big press conference from the AAP also on the issue of AAP approaching the Supreme Court against the Delhi High Court's order yesterday which said that the arrest of Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal is not illegal. Also very importantly it is uh, need to be uh, considered that today is the day when the BJP has also given a call to gather at the DDU mark where the Aam Admi Party office is situated and also uh, stage a protest against the, the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal demanding a resignation from him. Back to you. Right, thank you, Simran, for getting us those details. Uh, we'll, of course, be keeping a close watch uh, as to when the new date is announced for the meet. Moving on, uh, we are getting you all the news and wrap from across the country. State Congress President Ajay Rai called... ...called... Uh, Rumors of him joining BJP baseless and said that when the people in BJP have no work, then they speak such things. He further said that the Congress will remove BJP from the state. ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी के जो लोग हैं, जब उनको कोई काम नहीं मिलता, जब वो घबरा जाते हैं, परेशान हो जाते हैं, तो यही सब हल्ला उड़ाते हैं। Samajwadi Party MP Dimple Yadav said that when Indi Alliance was formed, the BJP was worried the most. She added that Indi Alliance is fighting the elections very strongly and is getting the support of the people. India Gadbandhan, which is a very important part of the country, is fighting the country and the country. I am happy to say that people are getting the support of the people. Morning Aarti was performed on the second day of Navratri at the Chhatapur Temple in Delhi. Devotees are thronging mandirs on Navratri to offer their prayers. Delhi police arrested a man for killing his live-in partner due to continued pressure for marriage. The accused is said to be a notorious criminal who is involved in over 10 cases, including attempted murder and violations of NDPS Act. The body of his live-in partner was found inside a wardrobe with strangulation marks on her body. A fire broke out in the mining headquarters, that is, Mineral Building in Lucknow. The fire was so terrible that its flames were visible from a distance. Many fire tenders are on the spot to control the fire. However, it is not yet known what caused the fire. 
A fire broke out in the forest of Trinagar city of Bauri district of Uttarakhand. Forest area officer informed that the forest department team and the fire brigade teams are working to douse the fire. A massive road accident took place in Raipur after a bus fell into a 50 feet deep ditch. At least 12 passengers died while many are sustained injuries. According to reports, more than 40 people were travelling in the bus when the accident happened. In a shocking incident, unidentified miscreants entered into wrestling arena and attacked wrestlers with rods and sticks, visuals of which have been captured in the CCTV cameras. Teams have been formed to get hold of the miscreants that are identified in this act. Now, years with less than 10 days to go for the Lok Sabha battle to begin, Prime Minister Modi is back in Tamil Nadu. From Rameshwaram to Tiruchirappalli, the Prime Minister's campaign in the South has been unstoppable. His South mission continues today as he moves on to address public meetings in Vellore and Mattupalliya. Here's a report. Take a listen. With less than 10 days to go for Phase 1 of the Lok Sabha 2024 polls, Prime Minister Modi's Tamil outreach continues ahead. Over the last few months, the Prime Minister has visited Tamil Nadu and the South over a dozen times. From his temple visits in Rameshwaram, Dhanush Kodi, to Vikas drives in Tiruchipalli and Kalapakkam, Tamil Nadu has been modified. And today marks day two of the Prime Minister's South sojourn. Prime Minister Modi is set to attend a public meeting at Vellore and Mittupalayam in Tamil Nadu. The NDA and its mega push for Viksit Tamil Nadu has laid the foundation stone of several projects. The PM has described that at the root of this connectivity with the state lies a larger vision of development in the southern region which would lead India on the path of Atmanirbharta. Remember, all seats in Tamil Nadu go to polls in Phase 1. The Prime Minister's unstoppable poll blitz marks his relentless support for the BJP leaders set to contest in the state. With the kind of response the BJP is garnering on ground, the Saffron Party is confident of winds of change in the southern state. Bureau Report, Republic TV. In a fresh election controversy, BJP's Huzur uh, legislator Rameshwar Sharma stoked a row after he said that Congress veteran Digvijay Singh will be sent to Pakistan after the latter's defeat in Rajgar Lok Sabha constituency of Madhya Pradesh. Listen in. ने संकल्प दोहराया है पिछले बार से अधिक लीड यानी एक लाख अधिक लीड से ब्यावरा विधानसभा को जिताना है और पूरी लोकसभा आठ लाख वोटों से अधिक से जीतेंगे और जो राजा यहां घूम रहा है उसको ऐसा पैक करके भेजना है कि अगला जो ठिकाना होगा उसे हिंदुस्तान में नहीं बल्कि इस्लामाबाद और लाहौर में उसका ठिकाना हो क्योंकि उसको चाहने वाले मध्य प्रदेश में और देश में नहीं है दिग्विजय सिंह को चाहने वाले तो सीमा उस पार है वो उनको चाहता है उन... और उनको वो चाहते हैं और ये उनको चाहते हैं हम तो जय श्री राम वाले हैं जो राम को चाहते हैं हम उनको चाहते हैं कर्ताओं ने संकल्प दोहराया है नाउ आफ्टर हिटिंग बैक Digvijay Singh has now said his lawyers are examining the comment an action will be initiated post that मैं तो कोई नई बात नहीं करना चाहता इनके पास कोई दूसरा मुद्दा ही नहीं है दूसरा रामेश्वर शर्मा जी ने जो बयान दिया है उसको मेरे वकील लोग उसका परीक्षण कर रहे हैं और उस पर क्या कार्रवाई हो सकती है उस पर निर्णय मैं तो कोई नई बात नहीं करना चाहता इनके पास कोई दूसरा मुद्दा ही नहीं है दूसरा रामेश्वर शर्मा जी 
ने जो बयान दिया है उसको मेरे वकील लोग उसका परीक्षण कर रहे हैं और उस पर क्या कार्रवाई हो सकती है उस पर निर्णय मैं तो कोई नई बात नहीं करना चाहता इनके पास कोई दूसरा मुद्दा ही नहीं है दूसरा रामेश्वर शर्मा जी ने जो बयान दिया है उसको मेरे वकील लोग उसका परीक्षण कर रहे हैं और उस पर क्या कार्रवाई हो सकती है उस पर निर्णय Now we was just ahead of the Lok Sabha election BJP MLA Rameshwar Sharma stirred a controversy with his remarks against uh, uh, former Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister and Congress leader Digvijay Singh and Digvijay Singh we just heard him saying that a legal action will be taken against him let's remind you that uh, Rameshwar Sharma had sent that had said that Digvijay Singh will be sent to pakistan after the poll defeat and digvijay singh has reacted to the comments saying a legal action will be taken joining us is my colleague uh, satya vijay from bhopal a uh, very good morning to you satya vijay uh, there we just heard a uh, former chief minister and congress leader digvijay singh saying that a legal action will be taken against uh, bjp mla rameshwar sharma Take us to exactly what did he say? जी बिल्कुल देखिए लोकसभा चुनाव का प्रचार जो है वो चरम पर है मध्य देश के साथ साथ मध्य प्रदेश में भी चुनावी प्रचार हो रहा है रामेश्वर शर्मा भोपाल के हजूर से भाजपा के विधायक हैं और वो दिग्विजय सिंह के गढ़ राजगढ़ में गए थे जहाँ से कि दिग्विजय सिंह खुद प्रत्याशी हैं चुनावी मैदान में हैं इसी दौरान रामेश्वर शर्मा ने दिग्विजय सिंह पर अटैक किया उन्होंने कहा कि दिग्विजय सिंह चूँकि उन्हें देश के बाहर सीमा उस पार की जनता पसंद करती है मध्य प्रदेश और देश की जनता उन्हें प्यार नहीं करती उन्हें पसंद नहीं करती और इसीलिए राजगढ़ की जनता उन्हें इस तरह हराएगी पैक कर कर इस्लामाबाद और लाहौर भेज देगी ये जो बयान है इसको लेकर दिग्विजय सिंह ने कड़ी प्रतिक्रिया दी है दिग्विजय सिंह ने साफ तौर पर कहा है कि उनकी जो लीगल टीम है वो इस बयान का परीक्षण कर रही है और उनकी लीगल टीम अगर इसे इसमें जो कंट्रोवर्सी है इसको लेकर उनकी लीगल टीम जो है इलेक्शन कमीशन के पास कार्रवाई की मांग भी कर सकती है चूँकि रामेश्वर शर्मा या भाजपा की बात करें तो रामेश्वर शर्मा चूंकि उनकी छवि हिंदुवादी नेता की है वो लगातार इससे पहले भी कई बार दिग्विजय सिंह पर इसी तरह के अटैक करते रहे हैं दिग्विजय सिंह को वो पाकिस्तान परस्त कहते रहे लेकिन अभी चूंकि चुनाव का समय है ऐसे में दिग्विजय सिंह ने और रामेश्वर सोना के बयान को गंभीरता से लिया है थैंक यू सत्य विजय फॉर कैरिंग आस दो डिटेल्स नाउ व्यूअर्स गेटिंग यू द लेटेस्ट इलेक्शन रैप फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द कंट्री Continuing his poll campaign for the upcoming Lok Sabha Prime Minister Narendra Modi will today hold public programs in Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra. In Maharashtra he will show his support for not only the BJP but also for candidates of alliance partners. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath will kick start BJP's mega campaign from Katwa today. This will mark Yogi Adityanath's first visit to the Union Territory. After Chief Minister Yogi's visit to Katwa, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is scheduled to address a mega election rally at Modi Stadium in Udhampur on the 12th of April. Union Home Minister Amit Shah will address two public rallies in West Bengal and Bihar. Shah will first address a rally at Dolatpur in West Bengal and then travel to Bihar where he will address another rally at Guraru in Gaya district under the Aurangabad Lok Sabha constituency. Shiv Sena leader Anand Dubey launched a scathing attack at MNS saying that MNS neither has leaders nor voters or workers. He said that Raj Thakre works as the B team of the BJP. राज ठाकरे जी भारतीय जनता पार्टी की बी टीम बनकर काम करते हैं ये सबको पता है अब चाहे खुलकर काम करिए और चाहे पीछे से उनके लिए मदद करिए चाहे खेल के मैदान में उनके साथ खेलिए चाहे मैदान के बाहर से उनके साथ खेलिए खेलना तो आपको उन्हीं के साथ था ये पूरे महाराष्ट्र की जनता को मालूम था पूरे देश की जनता को मालूम था कि आज राज ठाकरे जी क्या घोषणा करने वाले हैं 
Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu said that the attempt made by Jairam Thakur to topple the government using money is a murder of democracy. He said the people will announce their decision on the 1st of June. जो सरकार जनता के बोर्ड पर चुनकर आई उस सरकार को नोट के दम पर गिराने की कोशिश जो जयराम ठाकुर जी ने की है जो लोकतंत्र की हत्या की है हिमाचल का जनमानस जागरूक है हर पाँच बात पाँच साल के बाद सरकार को बदलता